Hi there, it's Myra again. And today we are doing our second video in the series on dyeing fundamentals, which are those important steps you wanna take before you even start your natural dye. So in our first video, I talked about how to prep your yarn, like turn a skein into a hank, and how to scour your yarn. And in this video, we're going to be talking about mordanting, which is a really important step in the natural dye process. So what is a mordant? Why do we mordant? Do you have to mordant? The main issue with natural dyes is that they will fade over time through exposure to the sunlight and through washing. And one of the main ways you can slow this process down is by first doing a mordant to your yarn. It's also called a pre-mordant. So what is a mordant? To be very basic, you're coating your fiber in a substance that the dye then absorbs into that substance. So for instance, today I'm gonna to be mordanting with alum. So I'm gonna give my fiber a bath in alum. The alum absorbs into the fiber. And then when I do my dye later, the dye is going to then have an easier time absorbing into that alum soaked fiber. And because it has an easier time doing it, the dye will be richer or brighter and it's not gonna wash out as easily. Do you have to do it? Well, no, I mean, you don't have to. Like onion dyes, which is a great beginner dye, you'll still get that yellow on the fiber. Just remember, it might fade faster than if you did um, that dye using a mordant. There are a lot of other mordants out there, but I like alum. It's a really good place to start, and that's what we're gonna do today. What do you need to do a mordant? Well, the first thing you might notice is that I'm outside. So you want it to do it in a well-ventilated area. If you're gonna do it inside, then you should probably open up some windows. Even though I'm using alum and alum is not toxic, it may irritate you breathing in those fumes. Um, and on that note, you might also wanna wear gloves, an apron, a mask, if you're not sure how alum will affect you. As you can see, I'm not doing any of those things, but that's because I know alum doesn't irritate me. So the supplies I'm gonna to use today are my dye supplies, which I picked up at a, a secondhand store, my favorite thrift store, because you do not want to use your kitchen supplies with your dyeing. Even though it's not toxic, we still wanna keep those completely separate. Here I have my stainless steel pot. I'm using stainless steel because you don't want the metal of the pot to interact with the mordant. I have my kitchen scale for measuring um, sorry for weighing my fiber. I have my alum, and to be specific, it is aluminum sulfate. I'm also gonna add in some cream of tartar, which I got at the bulk section in my grocery store. This helps um, keep the wool a little bit soft and also helps the alum sort of combine in with that fiber. I have a stainless steel measuring cup and my measuring spoons. And most importantly, I have my fiber. I'm using animal fiber today. It's wool, 100%. If you're gonna use a plant fiber, there's an extra layer of steps to the mordanting process, which I will not be going over today. So this is how to do a mordant on wool or on another animal fiber. So I have my animal fiber wool soaking here that's ready for the pot. Let's do it. First of all, I have my pot and I filled it about three quarters of the way up with water. You want there to be enough water for the fiber to move around freely. And I brought it up to a simmering, not necessarily a boil, just that sweet spot between simmer and boil. And now I'm ready to add my alum. So if you go online or if you look in dye books, you might notice that there's some variability on how much alum to add when doing the mordant. And it can range from 10% all the way up to 20% of the weight of your dry fiber. So I know that I have a 100 gram hank of yarn. That means I would use 10 grams of alum or all the way up to 20 grams of alum. Today I'm gonna use a tablespoon. So that's a little more than 10 grams. So I have my hot steamy water. I'm gonna use my stainless steel cup I'm going to scoop out some of that very hot water 
and I'm gonna first add my alum and my cream of tartar to this cup. The reason I am going to do that is because I want to make sure that the alum, the alum and the cream of tartar completely dissolve before I add my fiber. So this is a half tablespoon scoop. So I added two of those to make a tablespoon. And now for my cream of tartar, I am going to add one and a half teaspoons. And I'm just going to roughly estimate the half. I'm going to completely stir and mix this in until I do not see any of those little dry flakes at the bottom. And then once I can see this is thoroughly mixed, I'll pour this into my hot water. And I'm gonna give this another stir. Again, you wanna make sure this is a nice, completely dissolved solution before you add your fiber, because you don't want any of that alum to actually clump and make little uneven spots on your fiber, is what I'm trying to say. It was a clunky way to say it, but I think you get the idea. Um, so now I'm going to use my fiber. I pre-wetted it, again, because this helps with the evenness. If you are scouring, you can just throw your wet fiber from the scour directly in, or if your yarn was dry after scouring, just pre-wet it, pre it with water and then add it in. So, add in my skein in. I'm gonna just give it a gentle stir to make sure that that alum solution can get to every little strand of fiber. And I'm gonna keep it at a simmer for an hour. And I'm gonna check on it, maybe every 15 minutes or so, give it a quick little stir just to keep that solution moving. And then I'm gonna turn off the heat and I'm gonna let this skein cool in the alum water and then you're done, you hang it up. You can either hang it up and then put it straight into your dye pot if you're dyeing the same day, or ideally you do a big mordant, get a bunch of fiber mordanted and ready to go and then dried for when you want to use it in the future for your dye projects. So I hope that was a help to you and good luck. See you next time.